Welcome. This is what is happening on the Sunday day, the 16th of September 2011. I've had so many flares in the last 24 hours, frankly, I've lost count. But before we get to that, our trivia question. 24 years ago this day, a treaty was signed that limited the use of chlorofluorocarbons to help with the uh, ozone hole over the Antarctic. What was the name of that treaty? The answer will be given at the end. As I mentioned in the introduction, we've had at least 13 sea flares in the last 24 hours, probably more. But we've had no major M flares, which is quite surprising considering how many regions there are on the disk and how big they are. So let's take a look at the sunspot regions and see what's going on. We have 10 officially numbered regions on the disk and one as yet unnumbered region. So let's look in detail at region 1289 first, which is the largest region on the disk. It has two regions that have grown up nearby, region 1291 and 1293. Here's a close-up picture of the three of them. Region 1289 is the region with a large spot, and that spot has continued to grow in a very interesting way. It looks as though it's breaking up into three separate spots within the same penumbra. The region to the west, region 1291, I think is labelled incorrectly. There was a region in that area about three or four days ago, however it disappeared completely, and a new region sprang up slightly further to the west, at least by my estimates. So I think this is actually a brand new region, not region 1291. And as you can see from the picture comparing yesterday with today, it is growing very, very rapidly. It's a pity this is going to go over the West Limb in the next day or so. Region 1293 has clearly been decaying overnight, so I don't think that's going to be much of a source of activity for us. One new aspect of these graphics is I've put behind each region the number of flares that they've produced in the last 24 hours. Green indicates C flares, yellow indicates M flares, and red indicates X flares. And as you can see, none of these regions have produced even a sea flare. The two regions near the southwest limb, regions 1290 and 1297, are getting so close to the limb it's very difficult to tell what's going on. But it looks as though region 1290 has grown slightly in the leader area and decayed in the following area. 1297 seems to be still a source of activity, having produced six sea flares in the last 24 hours. But we'll be losing that by tomorrow. However, it is changing very rapidly. I've put a small inset here showing another picture of the region taken just a couple of hours after the first. and You can see how much the leading spot has changed. This is quite amazing. Region 1292 near disk center is decayed to a single spot and that itself seems to be decaying in size. A very similar story applies to region 1294 in the southwest. It is decaying quite rapidly and now seems to be just a single spot. The last three numbered regions are in the northeast, regions 1295, 1296 and 1298. Here's a detailed image of the three of them together. It's clear from this comparison, region 1295 has developed hugely over the last 24 hours. Yet it is region 1296 to the north and east that is credited with producing most of the sea flares. I'm not sure I believe this, and again I think there's been some misidentification of the flares associated with these regions. Region 1298 is a relatively modest region, although it looks as though it's developed a little bit over the last 24 hours. The one unnumbered region is one of the unnumbered regions that I mentioned yesterday is in the southeast, and it certainly seems to have grown overnight, so I expect by this time tomorrow this will be region 1299. So overall, solar activity is relatively quiet, even though we've had a large number of small sea flares. So now let's take a look at the continuous evolution of these regions using the sunspot and magnetic data from the HMI instrument on the Solar Dynamics Observatory. Again, choose your favorite region and follow how it uh, evolves. I would suggest running through this several times and looking at the emergence and disappearance of each region individually. In the transition region movie, see if you can see where there are the most active centers and are there any eruptions, which might indicate the launch of a coronal mass ejection. In the low temperature coronal movie, concentrate on the east limb. Towards the end there are some spectacular loops showing from behind the limb, a promising sign for future activity. Last night I was fortunate enough to capture an image from the SXI instrument on GOES which showed one of the sea flares. You can see it there on the southwest limb, obviously from region 1297. In the images from the SOHO LASCO coronagraph, you can see that there's only been one coronal mass ejection in the last 24 hours. So there does seem to be some reduction in the rate of coronal mass ejections in the last day or so. And that very closely corresponds to the lack of eruptions that we saw in the uh, Helium-2304 transition region movie earlier. 
The solar wind data from A show us that the temperature and the density of the solar wind hasn't changed very much in the last 24 hours. However, the velocity of the solar wind has continued its steady decline. So the high-speed stream from that coronal hole seems to have now passed the Earth. The high-energy electron flux remains high, and as we've had no major flares, it's not surprising that we've not had any proton events. The NOAA satellite data show us that the auroral zone is very quiet, and the KP index is varying between just 0 and 2. So in summary then, the X-ray background has risen to the B8 level, the sunspot number is at a high 167, radio sun intensity has remained at about 140 solar flux units, solar wind speed has dropped to 400 km per second with a density of 2 protons per cubic centimetre, and geospace conditions are rated as very quiet. My forecast for the next 24 hours are that C and M flares are very likely, X flares are possible, the sunspot number will remain high, coronal mass ejections remain likely, the solar wind speed will remain low, geomagnetic storm is possible but more likely uh, the day after tomorrow. From the composite coronal image we can see that the major region in the northeast is still two days behind the limb, which makes these uh, loops that we're seeing all the more remarkable if they are associated with that region. The answer to the trivia quiz is that the treaty was called the Montreal Protocols. So that's it for today. Keep safe. Bye for now.